Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm Harold, and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can bring recommendation and generation closer together. Uh, this is joint work with my PhD student, Vin. Um, and uh, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the uh, stuff that we've seen for the past day and a half. So we've seen a lot of recommendation systems for consumers. So I'm a consumer myself. I'm, uh, I'm on Netflix a lot, right? I, uh, my, I have a pretty respectable Kindle collection and I go to restaurants recommended by Google. Um, but I don't spend that much time on Netflix, right? The only time I actually get on Netflix is after I put my two-year-old son to bed, and that's, you know, late at night, right? I actually spend most of my time um, making stuff, right? And I think you do too, right? So as an academic, what I do is I make conference papers, right? I make conference papers and conference slides. So if you're an academic, you make these things too. Uh, if you're in industry, you maybe make systems and software and, and hardware like mobile phones. You maybe work for a content uh, producer. So you may be working on the next, uh, let's say, House of Cards or, or a Game of Thrones, right? Um, if you're an item maker and not an item consumer, you have a different set of questions. So as a, you know, what kind of uh, product should you make in order to appeal to a wide range of people? Right? What kind of papers would be interesting? Um, who would like those products? And uh, if you're interested in market domination, you know, how many products do you need to make to you know, cover the, the largest segment of the market as much as possible? So these uh, questions aren't really answered by any existing uh, recommendation system for consumers. So that's, that's a problem that we, we looked at. Uh, we, in this work, we basically formalized this problem, and then we developed methods to answer these three questions uh, simultaneously. Okay? So let's start off with the uh, formalizing the problem. So we're going to start a very natural way. We're just going to say, okay, we have a bunch of users, and we have a bunch of items, uh, items that we could create. And we have a rating function. So this rating function just tells you, you know, how much this particular user likes a particular uh, item. So here, uh, user 1 and user 2 like the cell phone S1. Uh, user 3, not so much. Okay, and we have these for every, uh, every pair of item and user. Um, I'm going to choose the concept of cover. I'm going to say an item covers a user uh, if um, the rating exceeds some threshold. So here, if, imagine if the threshold was 0.7, this is a user set parameter, uh, then uh, the, the cell phone S1 covers user 1 and user 2, uh, the cell phone S2 covers user, S user 2 only, and the cell phone S3 covers uh, user 3 only, okay? So here's, uh, here's a question. Intuitively, if you could only pick two of these cell phones to make, right, which would you pick? So I'm going to make a guess. Uh, you're going to pick S1 and S3, right, because that's going to cover all three users, okay? So how are we going to formalize this intuitive uh, way of picking? Uh, one way to do it is to say we're going to pr uh, produce a maximization problem. We're going to say, okay, we're going to pick a set V, uh, such that, you know, if uh, you, you try to cover as many people as possible, but if you have two sets which have the same, you know, number of people covered, you pick the one with the total, total largest rating, right? So that's what you're going to do. There are going to be two uh, constraints. One is that a user is covered only by one item, so no double counting. And the second is you only get to pick K items, okay? So that's, that's going to be our setup. So everyone is uh, happy with this setup so far? Uh, I see some nods, you, you shouldn't be happy, right? Because this problem is impossible to solve. You should be saying, I'm a crazy person for telling you this. Why is this impossible to solve? Number one, we don't know what the set of all possible items are. This is, this is not something you have. You don't, users can't rate items that don't exist, right? So you don't have this rating function either. And then I'm proposing to do maximum coverage, uh, maximum weighted coverage, which is an MP-hard problem over a set which doesn't, doesn't exist yet. So uh, this is really an impossible problem to solve. Okay, I'm not crazy, right? So I'm gonna propose ways to get around this. Um, let's strip away all the unnecessary details and just come back to our original problem with users and items. I'm gonna say we're gonna leverage our old friend, the latent space, okay? We're gonna say each, item, each user, right, is represented by a real vector space, a real vector, uh, a real vector, and similarly for the items, all right? And since we don't really know what the rating function is, let's specify something convenient like a dot product or a Euclidean, Euclidean distance, right? So that's something that we do all the time. And uh, the key idea here is that we are trying to uh, take this discrete set, right? Unknown discrete set of perhaps infinite size, and we're trying to map it to a more convenient space. In this case, a real vector space, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna search in this real vector space uh, in order to find our items, okay? Our items that we wanna produce. And so our impossible problem has just become, you know, maybe more possible, right? Provided we can learn Z. 
So the way we're going to learn Z uh, is to leverage uh, deep generative models. Um, there are three steps. We're in the learning and optimization session. So the, the method actually comprises a learning step, an optimization step, and a decoding step. So it's kind of two pieces in there. So uh, the, in the learning step, I won't go into detail. I'll just try to convey the main intuition. Uh, the idea is that you're trying to minimize the loss, and the loss comp is composed of three terms. One term, you want, to minim you want to get the best rating you can, right? You want to get a structure such that the ratings are preserved. Uh, second, you want to be able to reconstruct your items. And third, you have some regularizer, okay? There are two structures you're trying to optimize. Uh, one is the encoder. So the encoder takes the item features and maps it to your latent space. Uh, you also have a decoder. It takes an, a latent uh, vector, and then it maps it to back to your uh, feature space. Okay. Uh, the decoder is very important because usually you're not really interested in the uh, latent uh, representation. What you're interested in is actually the item features. Right? You want to know whether the phone you're making is big or small and so on and so forth. So the second step is optimization. Uh, in the optimization step, recall we're just trying to do maximum cover. Uh, first, we're going to have to uh, discretize the space a little bit. So we are going to uh, do that. You can do that very simply uh, because you're just in a real vector space. So you can just sample. Uh, one way is just to use the encoder and then sample from that. Uh, then now we are, uh, this problem that you have uh, is empty hard, unfortunately, but uh, it is also submodular. And because it's submodular, we can apply a uh, greedy maximum coverage. And that achieves a very nice approximate ratio and is the best polynomial time algorithm unless p equals mp. Uh, so that's, that's good. Uh, so the algorithm itself is very, very simple. All we want to do is successfully pick the item uh, that covers the most, most people. Okay? And that's what we keep doing. Right? We pick one, covers five, we take those five away, we find the next item that covers the next largest pool of people, uh, that's three, and then we find one more item. Let's say we pick K to go to three. All right? And in this case, we've covered all the people. All right. Last step is really simple. We already have our latent representations, or we just need to decode them. We train our decoder in the learning step, so we're done. That's it. One, two, three. Learning, optimization, decoding. So here's a synthetic, uh, there are no uh, established protocols for this problem because it's kind of new. So we design our own synthetic problem. Our key question is this, look, does it work? Right? Can we actually generate uh, something that isn't available in the data set? All right? So here we, we have four groups of people, and they have an ideal item that they like to buy, right? but they don't it doesn't exist in the data set, and those are shown by the crosses there. So we want to try to regenerate this, uh, this, these crosses. Okay? These are 20-dimensional items. We are just visualizing it in 2D. So what do we find? Uh, actually, the model, the VAE, actually does very well. Right? It's able to reconstruct these uh, hidden items to a sufficiently good degree. We also compared it against a linear model. So in this, if, do you actually need a deep neural network in order to generate these things? Can't you just you know, use a simple linear function? Turns out you can't. Uh, it doesn't work as well. As shown by the blue dotted line, that, that doesn't work very well at all. Uh, the next question you might have is, wait, maybe, maybe you're not really generating that missing item. Maybe what you're doing is you're generating some item that already exists. It just has to be, happens to be close by, right? And actually, you're not doing that uh, because we can see from the uh, red line uh, there, that's the, the distance of the item generated to the closest existing item, and that's further away, right? So you're not just generating something that you've already seen before. Uh, coverages are good. So if you generate four items, you cover about 60% of the users, and that gradually increases as you uh, increase the number of items that you are generating. Oops, let's go back. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so this is a, these are more fun examples. These are qualitative examples. Uh, we tried to generate movies, all right? So we use the movie lens tag genome. So these are tags with scores. So the higher the score, the more relevant the tag is for that particular movie. So here are the top three movies. The first movie uh, is uh, a drama with uh, sentimental drama with a great ending, a touching story about friendship and mentorship. Uh, and uh, the closest movies are Shinji's List, Shawshank Redemption, and uh, Life is Beautiful, so famous movies. Uh, the second genre movie is uh, something like a social commentary, which is, uh, has elements of dark humor, so it's close to like Pulp Fiction and American Beauty. And the third movie is a quintessential action flick, right? It has elements of sci-fi. Uh, it's Terminator and Die Hard, the closest movies. So if you imagine, I guess, Skynet infecting the Nakatomi Towers, that's, that's about the movie that you're, it's recommending. So we also generated some art. Uh, you can see the visualization in the paper. Uh, here, the artwork is new. So the algorithm seems to be able to you know, combine you know, colors and shapes and structure in order to come up with artwork that it doesn't really exist in the data set. 
Uh, a couple of my students are trying to put this on a demo, so they've used the Google Cloud API, and then you can explore the different kinds of artwork they are, as well as to combine them uh, in interesting ways. So we're not actually proposing that you should generate art this way. Uh, it's just more of a fun exercise for you, you know, for an, a way to explore uh, the, 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 the data as well as the, uh, the model that we're building. Right? So you're, you're, this, this is an example of combining two pieces of artwork. Uh, and it also tells you the ratings, right? that's something extra. Okay, so these three steps again. Um, let's finish off by talking about what's next, right? There are three things I think that are interesting here. We've taken the first step, I think, on an interesting problem. Uh, there are alternative problem from formalizations. This is just one way of doing it. Um, if you're interested in machine learning, for example, in generating items in a particular domain, well, there's a lot of unsolved problems there. How do you generate something which is realistic? That's a, that's a key problem. And finally, getting a human being in the loop. Uh, we don't proposing to generate items automatically, not necessary. It's, it's more of a tool to help designers come up with interesting new stuff, all right? Uh, and we're doing some work there. Explainability comes to play and, uh, and controllability, and we're doing some work in that area, all right? So thank you very much. Uh, come talk to me in the poster. Questions? Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Joe Tanini, Red Ventures. Um, the constraint of kind of the, uh, you only want users to be singly covered, it seems like uh, as long as I cover everyone, I'd actually prefer like two and three covers to one covers. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, like, is there a different way to, I, I see why you need the constraint, but is there a way to sort of uh, Im impose what you need, but sort of prefer these like more robust products with wider appeal? I'm sure they are. Uh, we haven't gone there yet. So yes, there is. It falls under the you know, stuff to do under problem formalization. Uh, but yes, most definitely. Uh, I think someone, when I presented this back in Singapore, somebody uh, brought that up as well. And I was like, oh, OK, I'm, I don't really know yet. Let's see. Uh, I'm sure someone will come up with something. And maybe if you can come up with something, I'll be, I'll be very happy to know. Thanks. So it sounds like, oh, I'm Josh Mathias from University of Washington. Uh, it sounds like this is for kind of generally recommending this is an item that would be successful potentially. Is this like, or can it be personalized? Like, okay, you're this type of artist. You've made these types of things in the past. Or, or maybe they can say like, okay, I'm looking for this specific domain. Yeah. Right. So there's uh, two kinds of personalization going on here, or perhaps two questions. Uh, I'll try to see whether I can answer yours. I'm not sure. Uh, so one is that you're trying to personalize items to users uh, that have previously rated things, right? So that's one way. The other is that uh, it's trying, you're going to try to personalize things to, to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the designer, right? You're currently going to try to recommend things that you think the designer can make. Is that perhaps your question, the latter? Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't touched that particular problem. Uh, it's an interesting one. I'm not sure how to do that because we're going to have to incorporate uh, some knowledge, some of who, where the designer is, perhaps in the latest space or uh, in using some other constraints, uh, some of the metrics. We, it's an open problem. Yeah. More questions? Hi. Thanks. For your uh, interesting work, I'm Monshan from UC San Diego. So uh, you have you used uh, you know the uh, CVAE as your generative model, right? So actually, we have many other app options. So is your framework you know can easily adapt to other generative model or what's the advantage and disadvantage like uh, generative adversarial networks? Yes, yeah, thank you. Right, so you can actually use GANs, I think, in the approach. You're gonna to have to modify the loss function a little bit. Uh, the problem with GANs a little bit is that. Uh, uh, so one of the discoveries recently is that GANs don't actually produce um, likelihoods that are actually correct, right? So the VAs do a better job. And in fact, uh, even Gaussian mixture models do a better job than that. So uh, that's something that you perhaps have to watch out for uh, with GANs. So GANs can generate quite nice stuff, but you don't have so much control over that. So that's a bit of an issue. Yeah, so... Thanks again. Okay.